Why hello you people from Earth and outer space, it is I, Alexander from the universe. In this episode of Let's Live GX, we'll be installing as well as setting up what's necessary in order to begin developing games. The first thing you're going to want to do is open up your good old internet browser. The first thing we're going to download is the libgdx library for Java in order to make amazing wonderful games. And we can retrieve that by tapping in to our handy search bar up here, libgdx download. That's going to take you to this page, download libgdx from Bad Logic Games. You're going to want to download the setup app. Keep it. It's in Swedish. Hoorah. <laughs> Press this. And if Java is successful in starting a computer, this is going to open up a nice little libgdx project generator. Now, there is something about this. You can see we got a name, we got a package, we got a game class, but we also have an Android SDK down here. We also have a destination up here for where we want to create our project. But we have an Android SDK here, and we don't have an Android SDK as of now. So we're going to need to download the Android SDK. SDK stands for Software Development Kit. And since we don't have it, we're not going to be able to actually create a project using libgdx. So we're going to head over to our handy little internet browser here again and search for Android SDK. I was telling you that there is an Android Studio IDE before. And we're going to press this link, but we're not actually going to download the Android Studio because we'll be using Eclipse. Mainly because I think it's better. So scroll down on this page to the very bottom, like really far down. It's going to say get just the command line tools. You're going to want to download that for your specific operating system. Now, since I'm on Windows, I'm going to press this. It's going to go pop up a little terms and conditions. You read through this. I've obviously read through all of this myself. Uh, I, I believe it's safe. I'll press the little I have read and agreed to the above terms and conditions button here and download this zip. Close that. It's going to take a while. And as if by magic, the zip folder's been downloaded. You're going to want to open that. And we're going to want to extract it. Now, I've got WinRAR here. I'll actually use that to extract those files. I'm going to press OK. It's going to extract real nice. It's going to take a while, but as if by magic, the directory has been extracted. Now you might be wondering why on earth would actually need this stupid Android SDK. Now the reason for this is, as I told you in a previous episode, that using libgdx we can also develop games that run on Android, or programs for that matter, if you're one of those silly people. But this means that we require, that we are required to acquire <laughs> that we are required to acquire the Android SDK in order to actually develop anything. All the libraries contained by different Android versions. So once it's extracted, we're going to go into this folder, the tools. You're going to see a whole lot of things here. There are so many things here. There's the blah, 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 blah. So many things. And you're going to want to contemplate this for a bit. Because we need to open one of all these files. And the file we're gonna load is the Android one. It's gonna open up a terminal for us, but the terminal is gonna launch the Android SDK manager. Because before we can do anything using the Android SDK, we actually need to download some of the versions for it. And it is wise to download all the tools for the Android. So check this little checkbox here. Scroll down, we're going to get the latest version, whether that be 7.1.1 for you. Uh, we're also going to get a legacy version. Uh, we're going to get the 2.1, seems wise. And you might as well get the extras since you're, this installation is going to take a while anyway. So you just get the extras. And why not get some more versions while we're doing this? Let's get something between like... Uh, 4.4 w.2 let's get that version then you're going to press this install button and it's going to take a whole long time so accept the license as install it's going to take a while but as if by magic all the files have been successfully installed press ok press close and you're going to see that all of a sudden we have a lot of packages 
we have installed a whole lot of things because it says installed here, it says installed here and here and here and on so many places. So once all that is done, why on earth didn't we install that? Let's install that too. Press accept license, install, and it's gonna take a while, but as if by magic, those files too have been installed. So once that is done, we now have Android 7.1.1, we have the uh, Android 44W2, and we have the Android 2.1 platform. And this should be sufficient for us in order to start developing Android applications. So you can close this now, and the little console window is gonna close as well. Uh, and you're gonna see in your downloads here, we have the tools are 25, blah, blah, blah. And we have some interesting things here, the build tools. And in here, you can see a lot of different versions of Android. Like these are all the different things we have. There are so many things we have. It is crazy how many things we have. But this means that we have successfully installed the Android SDK that we require in order to start our libgdx project. So in order to get started with this, we're gonna set up a test project as for this episode. Uh, we're gonna give the name, uh, the name ain't gonna be start, the game class is gonna be start, this is gonna be the main class for your project. It's gonna be called start or perhaps even root or engine, whatever you so may desire. The name for it, let's do something along the lines of the the wonderful main main hello world example that makes a lot of sense let's actually let's not copy that uh, the package is for those who don't know is usually your website backwards followed by the name of this application so my package is going to be but you're going to stick with universe for this one uh, with an o dot and then the name of this application, which is the wonderful Hello World example, T-W-H-W-E, just make an abbreviation for that, TWID, like so. The destination, this is where we're creating our project on our computers, so we're actually gonna run around here a little, and we'll enter the documents folder, which we're already in, as a matter of fact. We'll make a new folder, because this libgdx project generator is going to generate one folder per type of sub project the desktop android ios and ios mo should you want that and html like these these are all boxes for the different versions of this project we wanted to work for desktop we wanted to work for android ios and html the location for this is going to be a new folder inside our documents T W H W E because that is one amazing application press open it's gonna nicely enter the address in there and now it's time to make use of our downloaded Android SDK you're gonna want to press browse and as of right now this is actually located under our downloads folder so if we just go through this for a moment we'll notice the little downloads folder here and we're gonna press this tools are 25.2.3 blah 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 press open and after that there is one more thing that you might actually want because whenever you want awesome looking lights inside your projects uh, it can be quite the pain coding them yourself so go and check the box 2d lights we might not be using them at any time throughout this series but it's always nice to have that there so, so these are the extensions that we can use, which are other libraries that libgdx will build upon, libgdx will import for you so that you can use them in your project. Now Box2D is for physics, we don't actually require that because we'll be making all that ourselves, uh, but we really want the Box2D lights because we're really lazy about that, or well, I am, <laughs> I won't blame you for this one. but. We have the box 2D, that's required for the box 2D lights, so we have that as well. And we're gonna press generate. And it's gonna say, you have a more recent version of Android build tools than recommended. Do you wanna use your more recent version? And we're, as a matter of fact, we're gonna press yes. Now you're able to change this using Android Studio later, but libgdx is sort of known to 
generate exceptions unless we press yes for this and yes for this warning and it's going to be generating so it's currently creating a new libgdx project for us so you just sit back relax and enjoy and as if by magic we have a firewall wall notation and we'll accept that and as if by second magic our build has been successfully generated so this means that right now we have ourselves a nice and beautiful libgdx project set up which is located inside there and inside our documents folder now somewhere in here jack and coke wonderful yep don't read through my file names people don't read through my file names but somewhere in here we'll have a twhwe or whatever you decide to name that and here we have everything contained by that project you see we have the ios folder the html folder gradle desktop core android and everything so once you have this project nicely set up you're gonna want to open up eclipse we have the welcome screen and we're gonna close that and all of a sudden now we're gonna press file and we're actually gonna import a project into Eclipse using this import here. And we import libgdx projects if we went for the default settings using Gradle up here, Gradle project, like so. And you get a little welcome screen from Gradle and it says blah, 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 Gradle is good, blah, blah, blah. Yes, Gradle is very good <laughs> at times like these anyway. And Gradle is a tool used to manage your Java projects and is especially good when we have something such as libgdx, whereas we want everything to be nicely managed for us so we don't have to get into the, the uh, shitlets. Press next and the project root directory, you're going to want to browse and you're going to want to locate your project that you generated using libgdx. It should be located under documents and we'll just look for that T W H W E or whatever you name that press. Okay. And all of a sudden you can press finish. It's going to take a short while, but as if by magic, Gradle has set up our projects for us. This means we can get to work. Now you'll see here that we have one project per version of this project there is there is a project for the android version the core version desktop version html and ios let's start at the core shall we open this up open the source folder of that you're going to see in here if we open this little package here we'll have a start.java file now inside of this file is all of our libgdx projects logic this is where we put all of our code inside this core project right here. And in here you can see some really basic Java code using the libgdx library. Uh, what this does, you're going to see in a second, because we are going to run this. But using the core project, we're not going to be able to run this, because this is simply kind of like a wrapper for all of our application code. But when running, it depends on if you want to run on Android, desktop, HTML, I or iOS. Perhaps you want to run for the desktop, for HTML in your browser, or for iOS. And we're going to want to run this on our desktop, on our computer. Open up the source here, open up this package. You're going to find yourself with a desktop launcher. This desktop launcher is what makes it possible for us to launch the libgdx program on our computers. You can see in here is the very basic code and I'm gonna get really frustrated looking at these curly braces being on the same line as the functions and classes. Uh, but you can see in here there is a, an LWJGL application configuration and we can configure basic things about how our application is gonna look. So this basically configures the game window for example, the title and the sizes. And before we do anything, we're actually gonna real quick change the width and height of our program. The width and the height seriously needs to be of the Fibonacci sequence, uh, meaning that it's almost gonna be of the golden ratio, because otherwise I'm gonna get really mad. So we're also gonna set a title. And the title's gonna be uh, <laughs> the wonderful Hello World example. 
version one, just to make it look as ugly as possible. In order to run this, we're gonna need to right click this class here and choose run as job application. And all of a sudden we have an error because it cannot load the file badlogic.jpg. Now this is a very common problem for Eclipse. What basically happens here is that our run configuration that we're using to run this project using cannot locate the badlogic.jpg file, which is located under here. Here is where all of our images are kept and well, sounds for that matter, any, any resources you might think of is badlogic.jpg, which is try and load. So in order to fix this, this happens for most people, especially on Windows. Uh, it might not happen for you. This means that, you're already, that you already have a window up. But if it does happen for you, you're gonna need to press this little down arrow here next to the Run button and press the Run Configurations. It's gonna, gonna open this screen for you. You're gonna wanna head over to Arguments. Down here on the Working Directory, you're gonna wanna press Other, Workspace, Android and Assets. Press OK, Apply and then Run. And all of a sudden, we have the very basic libgdx test screen that they set up for you. So what this did is that in a run configuration, it makes sure to also include that resource, the folder where we store all of our resources in. And this is why this works and looks so extremely beautiful. Why goodbye, you people from Earth and outer space. Feel free to leave a comment stating something utterly hilarious or perhaps even a like. Until next time.